Today we got a great show guys. Make sure you stay till the end. Like, comment, and subscribe. We're gonna do a deep dive into some of the things in marketing that are holding you back from scaling your business. We're gonna give you some actionable tools to go do today to make sure you keep your business growing. So I'm super excited to share this with you guys. Stay tuned, we're starting now. Today, I'm super excited to have Bob from Fresh Horizons Group. Bob, super nice to have you. I really appreciate you being on here. Yeah, hey, Victor, thank you for the opportunity. You know, first, I want to get a little context all the time because I want people to kind of get to know you, to us, your special customer, you know, who you are, how you started, you know, why you decided to go this route, that maybe we could start there. Yeah. So we, we have a, um, again, thank you. Uh, we have a, a really interesting story that we started off as a, as a coffee roasting company doing fundraising for organizations. We were doing these fundraisers, these coffee fundraisers for organizations. We had a client come to us and say, hey, this has been great, but can you do a t-shirt fundraiser? And I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. I'm what I call a serial entrepreneur. I've been in business for myself in one form or another since I was 14 years old. And so the, the easy answer was, yeah, let's do it. Jumped in, figured out how to run it. it. It did really well for them. And as we were looking around of how do we scale or grow the coffee company, we realized that there was a greater addressable market in the, the custom apparel and promo space. And we could touch more, more businesses and make a greater impact there than what I felt we could do with the, with the coffee side. So we transitioned. It took about a year to, to completely make that transition. We've been doing this now for a year and a half, two years, learning every day. Wow, that's awesome. So you, you go from being in the coffee business and looking at, hey, everybody in the coffee business is looking to do apparel or promotional items, and you started to figure out how to do it from zero. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of YouTube videos, <laughs> right? <laughs> YouTube university. So the, I, I love it. I learned a lot on YouTube as well. So it's a great yeah. place to learn. And some of the other videos, I'm like, Hey, if you guys like are really challenged on something, there's so many videos on YouTube that you can learn from. So that, that's a good point. Bob's already winning. He's got a business. He's got all this equipment, but how can I start? You know, how did, yeah. how did you, initially start was it expensive how did that happen so i told you I'm, I'm a serial entrepreneur so for the last 20 years i've owned a lawn care company that's what pays the bills in our life interestingly enough so that's a 20 year old company that this that fresh horizons group is quickly replacing that that income the way we got started was i think like a lot of people we started off relatively small not so much on a craft level but on an entry level professional level we started off with a vinyl cutter a uh, a graph tech uh, ce6000 couple of heat presses uh and a sublimation printer we thought we were going to do some pretty basic t-shirts and make some coffee mugs because that was kind of that kind of fit the mo originally and kind of snowballed from there so now and, and we just reinvested everything back into the company as we still do today so i was taught a long time ago invest in the best quality equipment you can possibly afford even if it's a bit of a stretch because long term it pays dividends you know we've got the graph tech we've got three or four different <clears throat> stalls hotronics uh heat presses we have sublimation printers we have roland's new vg2 wide format printer and then we just added the omniprint freejet 36 i can't even remember the name but <laughs> the uh, the plus version the cool version right so so we started off with one thing and just kept growing as as we found that uh, the customer base would support it and and that's super important because you know i'll always start where you can but i want people to really hear this and when you're investing in something try your hardest to think long term where you want it to go right so there's a lot of cheap stuff that you can get on the craft side and that's cool if you're doing hobbies but if you're actually intending to build a business over the long term you're better off stretching you're better off financing you're better off doing just a little bit more because your return over time will be much greater yes. and you won't have to spend again and again to keep 
moving up in equipment, right? So that's an important thing you bring up. It doesn't matter how small you are, how small you start. You've got to think long-term, guys, and make sure that you're investing in the right equipment that's actually going to help you do a professional job, right? Somebody in a business, somebody in an organization, somebody is really going to pay you because you're doing a professional job. It's not a crafty job that's going to fall off, that's not done right, it's not heat sealed right, you know, all that stuff. So it's important that people really realize, well, what, what made you transition out of lawn care and, and start doing something new? To scale a business, you have to have a really big market. Lawn care has been really good to us, but it has been limited in that we can only serve so much in a geographic area and it's extremely capital intensive. And and so this we we saw as an opportunity that yes, there's a, a capital investment up front, but the the return is much greater. And outside of that, it's extremely scalable. We, you know, with a website, Facebook, things like that, we can we sell product all across the country already. Most of that is done here in our own in our own region, our own backyard. But the fact that we have clients, you know, from coast to coast already is something we could never do with with lawn care, at least not without millions and millions of dollars in investment. When we looked at it from a business perspective, that was what was really exciting was that we could take all this knowledge that we've built or gained uh, over the last 20 years and apply that to a business that's truly scalable. want to make sure that we emphasize to people to always have some sort of thought about how you can scale, right? Like, are you able to have an offering on your website where somebody doesn't have to come knock on your door, but they can interact and buy from you, right? You being able to be a promotional company and actually have a bigger footprint that's not just in your local area is super important. So can I make this bigger and can I address a bigger part of the country or even international just by having that bigger presence and that bigger vision, right? I think one of the lessons that that I was taught in that is that you either control the business or the business controls you. We call our our lawn care company a lifestyle company, meaning that it can provide a lifestyle for us. And it it paid the bills, it's done well, right? But it's not a a scalable business because the either lack of a system or the inability to reach a greater audience. And so when we looked at this business, we said, how do we build systems and things to allow that, to make this business operate and, and grow whether we're here or not? To back it up a little bit, seven or eight years ago, eh, something like that, I, uh, I broke my right leg and was taken out, physically taken out of the field in the lung care company. I could no longer perform those tasks. And I laid in the hospital going through the recovery and the surgeries and all that stuff and wrote the operations manual for the lung care company of everything from how, you know, how we answer the phone to like how you put a snow thrower in the back of the truck so so that it's easy to take it in and out. Try to think about all of that stuff. So now that company operates a lot without us on a on a day-to-day, like telling the guys, okay, go do this, because we can sit down and go through a training manual and have clear expectations of what it is. So it's it becomes a lot less subjective and very objective as to how you're grading the performance of of something. So you start to focus more on building the system and and then finding people to plug into the system. Kind of the McDonald's concept, right? I mean, we can all agree that they don't produce the best burger, but they have the best system or one of the best systems. I, I guess that everything's arguable. So as we're building Fresh Horizons Group, I, I think one of the biggest shocks that we had was there is no system. In the lawn care company, we have this great software program that we use and it, it governs a lot of it. And then we bolt on that, that operations manual and it's, you know, we could literally take it, bring in somebody and say, follow this and you should be able to get 90% of the stuff right. Here, we've had to create all of those systems. You know, stuff like your work program is going to be instrumental in helping people in your community to grow and scale because it, it takes it 
step by step through there. If people then do what you just mentioned and document everything, you know how how this stuff goes, and it's it's arduous. It's not the it's not super fun to sit there and write down the the details of how something is done. But what happens is they can then begin to bring in people to fill in those spots and all of a sudden it'll, it'll take off and grow. And there's a lot to that. I mean, it, it, I think we're, I think we're very, we're making this very simplistic, but having software along with a process of how things are supposed to flow and happen, it takes it from something that always remains as a small operation, a mom and pop operation to something that you can, you know, that, that becomes the, the next Omniprint, right? Yeah. Guys, if you don't have an operational manual, on how you're running your business, get started somewhere, right? Because I think that number one is important is the mindset. If you have the mindset that you want to grow this thing, well, you're not going to do 12 jobs yourself. So start doing an operational manual, even of the stuff that you're doing now, right? Yes. The and, stuff that you're doing now is easy to document because you're doing it. Yeah. Just like, well, you're, you know, like if you're printing shirts, write down the, <clears throat> you just have a whiteboard and just write down the process of what you've done to, to print that shirt you can take a picture of it and then at some point when you've got a little bit of free time you can you can write a a, a quick one sheet thing that says this is how it's done yeah. but it, you, you just document the stuff that you're doing currently because what the the greatest question in, in this whole thing is what if what if you were had, you couldn't be there but you had to fulfill an order you know or you were going to get sued if you didn't you know that take make it extreme yeah. and and then when you develop that system and then you could take somebody that's maybe never seen uh, a, a DTG printer and say, here's how you do it. We understand that that's pretty, you know, at the very surface level, but at the same time, that's the concept, right? And, and so document what we're doing currently, build, build on that system, and then always be thinking about what can we do better? Where, where else do we need to systematize? Maybe, you know, maybe you suck at certain parts of your business. Um, I'm not the greatest financial guy. I'm a great idea guy, but I'm not the greatest at finances. Yeah. So hiring people to do that, but, and then building a system around how that part works. It, it, it's, that's how these huge companies come to be. Yeah. It, it, you know, I mean, you gotta, you gotta work hard kind of touching on the, on the fancy cars and houses and all that stuff. Those are all achievable, but we have to, I think we have to kind of check that against the effort that has to be put in. These people that we see on on social or YouTube or whatever that are just killing it, or it looks like they're killing it, right? We're only seeing a, a small snippet of what actually goes on. Yeah. You know, the, the amount of effort that a, that a, a big YouTuber is putting in is tremendous. Yeah. It, it's it, it's as much as building any other business. It comes across as being, you know, you just you just take the phone and put it in front of your face and and go. There's a lot that goes into it. And I think all of our businesses can grow and scale, but you have to put in the work and you have to you have to build a system so that it can it can grow. Otherwise you get super frustrated and you burn out. You know, we all, everybody talks about like how fast a lot of these businesses don't make it to five years or whatever. I, I think it's not that they fail. It's that they, they run out of ambition to overcome the lack of, of systems and, and just the sheer frustration that you have when you're starting at zero. Yeah, that's true. There's no like really replacement guys to that grind and that hustle. You know, for example, to put these shows on for us every single week is so that you can see that there's winners out there and these things that Bob and, and similar people are sharing, but it takes a ton of work, right? You've got to find what you love. And then it doesn't, we always talk about the grind, right? Yeah. But it doesn't become a grind. It's a hustle, but it's not a grind because we're enjoying it. You know, there's probably parts of Omniprint that you just are totally engaged with, you know, but then there's parts that you're like, yeah, I don't know. Do what we're really good at. Enjoy yeah. it. I love sales right? Yeah. Sales is my thing. I love going out meeting with people or having those conversations. It's just, I enjoy that. Some people hate that yeah. and, and it's okay. I'm good at it. I enjoy it. So that's what I focus on. But as we're building this company, we're looking 
at how do we, like I told you, I, I suck at the finances. So how do we, you know, put a, put, you know, systems or, or people in place such as an, a, you know, having an accountant look at things or, or whatever to, to solve that, those weaknesses. But it, when you focus on doing what you really enjoy doing, and if you're starting this as a, as a side hustle to your day job, find what you're good at, go after, and then put other people around you because it takes a team, right? You know, put a team around you to, to fill in those low areas or the things you don't want to do, and you will grow exponentially faster. In all of our years of owning businesses, the, the one area that, we, that I personally have really struggled with is r- running advertising. Yeah. And the, after you and I first spoke, and you said, hey, you know, let's let's do this. And you said, come up with a couple of questions. I thought, you know, where 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 do I suck? And and <laughs> um, where do and I it, suck? Ask you guys, ask yourself that question. Where do I suck? Yeah. And it's in advertising. It's in marketing. I know that it's necessary. I know all the you know, I get the concept of it. So I, I said, why? You know, I asked myself, why is that an issue? And it's because of the fear of what if this thing blows up and we we're not ready right i'm the guy that likes to have everything you know like when i start a project i line up all my tools or if we're doing a print run i have i know that we've got all the shirts sized now we've got you know there's like this whole process how do we how do i overcome the fear of running ads because if the thing grows up you know, or blows up, how do we handle all the orders that, I mean, because that's the idea of marketing, right? Is to get new customers in, get new orders in. So that's the first question is, how do you address the fear of advertising? I got to tell you, Bob, for you to start and then tomorrow you're overwhelmed with orders, that's probably not going to happen, right? So being scared of something that's not going to happen is preventing you from actually taking the initial steps to build a marketing campaign that gets you sustainable, measurable, quality leads that you can close, right? So for example, we have our stuff so dialed in right now that I could turn some knobs on our, our metrics or our spend, and then I can see stuff move, right? But it wasn't like that before. At the beginning, like I said, I come from a nerdy background, so I knew the technical ways of doing humongous email blast and all these things, right? But what do you type? What do you put on the body? What's the call to action? Where, what funnel am I sending somebody to yeah. right? that I could dial something back in, right? So what I would like really implore you to do, Bob, is kind of ignore yourself, right, at the beginning, Ignore your fear of getting too many orders because it's so competitive out there in the marketplace when it comes to online that it, it's going to be all right. And, and you can actually dial it up and dial it down if you do the right process, right? So you have to identify first, who's that target customer that I'm going after? Once you do that, you have to say, okay, well, what am I going to tell them? And then where am I going to send them to, to consume some content so they feel comfortable giving me their information so that we can have a talk, right? Or for example, are you trying to send somebody to your site to buy some garments online right now? Or where do you send your initial person? Yeah. So we have two, we have two ways of doing that. Freshhorizonsgroup.com is our primary site. It is set up as an e-com site, but we usually we're driving people towards like the request a quote form because we want to have that conversation. In a more niche market or, or niche offering, we have a site called safetyshirtsdirect.com, okay. which is targeted towards a small to medium-sized contractors. And it focuses on custom apparel for contractors safety apparel, and then some of the other promo items that they need, such as banners, yard signs, business cards, things like that. But it it speaks specifically to them. And that's much more e-com enabled to where if they go on, they should be able to place that order and, and do it. We haven't run traffic to it yet. Yeah. Um, but that those are the two that we have in place because I was told you should, you know, you should have a niche or, or a, a specific audience that you're targeting. 
So Fresh Eisen's group as a whole is it's pretty broad, you know. But then trying to understand marketing a little bit, we decided to target the small to medium sized contractor through safetyshirtsdirect.com, which is just a, another version, if you will, of yeah, Fresh Horizons. Yeah. So I get it. So so this is the thing. It's important to say, all right, so if my limitations are I'm scared of too much business, right? Because you might feel you're not ready, right? So in your head, if you could do something like set up and outsource in case you have that backup, right? So that it can actually let you focus, Bob, on the real task at hand, right? The real task at hand is first really defining where you want to send people, if it's your main site, which product. I don't feel that sending somebody to get a quote in 2020 is the way to go nowadays, right? Okay. You need to send somebody to go buy what they want to go buy because they don't want to talk to you, Bob, to get a quote, right? They want to see how much it's going to be. They want to order it. And if it's specialty, maybe they'll talk to you, right? In following up with that, yeah. the other question I had written is there's a lot of ways to market. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's easy to get lost in that. What do you feel or what have you found to be the best forms of marketing for this industry? We briefly, where we talked about making sure you have that customer experience nailed down so that you have somewhere to send your customers to marketing, right? But one thing that's super important when it comes to your, your second question is that you have to have all of your social presence. Social media is super strong. I forced you to get your Instagram done and up. <laughs> Because yep. the reality is there's so much noise. People want to connect with you. And even if you're saying, hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to post that my equipment just got here. I'm going to post that I'm training. I'm going to start letting people know to connect with me. Right? And like you'll, you'll be surprised how social media is starting to be one of the biggest marketing pieces that – that you can use, right? So make sure you're doing something there because where people's eyeballs are, are on Facebook, Instagram. That's where they're at. After that, you could do AdWords and YouTube, right? If I was choosing like four of my biggest things that if I can only do four, I would do those four. So you would, you would lead with social, follow that up with AdWords. And then make sure and that then YouTube. Yeah, make sure that you're putting videos up on YouTube because it's the number two search engine followed by uh, uh, Google, right? So people can look at, hey, uh, uh, may, maybe they're looking as to how, how you're making something, right? Or what you're documenting your journey, right? What you post. People that are winning right now in our niche, in our business, in apparel and all that, you know what they're posting is, they're posting the quality of their work that they're printing. They're posting the availability. They're, they're posting their expertise. They're posting their equipment. They're posting their shop. That's what they're posting. And it lets people know that, oh, man, these people really know what they're doing. Look at how their images are popping. It's amazing quality. I haven't seen it. Right? Good point. Um, okay. A, a lot of our customers that are going towards their second, third, fourth machine are posting a ton of that. Okay. A lot of people are posting like, hey, you know what? This is what my shop looks like. These are the services that I have available for, for you. This is where I'm located. Let me tell you guys about how I do print on demand. It comes to my website. And once it comes there, pay me. And then once you pay me, then I pre-treat it. And then I, I print it and I ship it to you, right? These kind of things of actual stuff that you're doing is really what people want to see so that they know you're not a scam. They know that Bob is real and they know that Bob's hustling to, to do high quality work and, and Bob is going to deliver for my deadline, for my party, for my corporate event, for whatever, right? So it's simple as that. It doesn't have to be so complicated. So Way overthinking that. I was, I was geeking that one out. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect, Bob. Just, just start somewhere and then increase the activity levels. I know... It might sound awkward. You know, we got to do 
10 times more posting, 10 times more, more videos, because that's what people are, are needing. How others are winning around them to give them that confidence is why we're doing this, right? All this stuff's free. I never want anybody to go spend money on marketing when you don't have your flow properly set up to have a transaction, right? Because marketing needs to be an investment that you get a return on. So if you start getting so many orders, you're saying that you're afraid of, you would dial back your marketing spend and you would have less orders. And that's how you would do that. But you don't get to turn that knob if you don't have the proper landing page set up, the proper product that somebody wants to go buy, and then you're able to let them check out and let them pay you, right? You, yeah. you, it's, it's super hard for you to do that. So what do we typically do? We go to what the fastest uh, excuse in our mind is that's easier. Hey, I don't want to get too ordered, too many orders. That's a really interesting point. Marketing is evolving, but remember guys, it's always an investment that you're putting in a buck, you should get three, five, 10, a hundred bucks out of that $1, right? It should never be an expense that you're scared of because it's what's going to elevate the business. Uh, it's what's elevated my business and whatever thing I invest in, I always look at what they're doing for marketing because it, it's, a, it's, a, it's the only way to get eyeballs on your product. And one thing that I learned from my mentors is that money follows attention. So get as much attention as you can to your products. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you comment, like, follow Bob at Fresh Horizons Group. Bob, I could speak with you all day, but I think that we got to cut this and, and you know, make sure you get back to work and start doing some marketing. I really appreciate you being on here. Super important for people to see how people are winning and then also get insights as to how they can keep winning and producing. So thank you so awesome. much, buddy. Victor, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity and, and uh, the straightforward information and, and the encouragement. So it, it's awesome and can't wait to, uh, to do the follow-up with you guys. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Sounds great, Bob. Have a good one. We'll chat with you soon. Sounds great. Thank you.